a lot coming up for you. He's got some great things launching. So let everybody know to tune in right now. The hour of power is on the way. I pray we are blessed with God's grace, mercy, and peace. peace. 1110 AM WTJZ Portsmouth FM 92.5 W223CT Norfolk and FM 104.9 W285FM Hampton. Listen live on praise1049.com, the ultimate gospel experience. It is time for the hour of power, and we are thankful to be thriving on this Thursday. Bishop Ray Johnson is here for Dominion Outreach Center, and I'm so excited and delighted to have him here because he told me that he's got some things launching, and I'm so excited for the community because I can't wait for you to hear it, so I'm going to hurry up and be quiet. I just want to <laughs> let you know one more thing, that if you desire prayer for any reason or if you have a praise report, don't hesitate to call in. The hour goes by so fast, so call in now, 757 454 1650 454 Bishop. Always, always thankful to be here on Thriving Thursdays. Always good to be with you, Coco, here at Praise Radio. You know, all of Christendom has been in the most celebratory time commemorating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in the time of Easter. And so I couldn't even get started without mentioning that because both Protestant and Catholic all over the world has really now been commemorating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that there are some uh, who don't necessarily celebrate the resurrection and or Easter because of its association with each star, which would be a pagan holiday. And uh, when you look at the idea of what we call religious syncretism, that's when uh, there are some things that may be secular in nature, but you have the opportunity to morph those things and then be able to use them to be able to glorify the kingdom of God. And so when Constantine had his conversion experience with Peter and Peter evangelized him, he kept looking at the different festivals that were taking place according to the calendar at that time. And uh, what people may not realize and, and uh, may not understand is that the term Easter comes from Ishtar, which is the goddess of fertility. And so there would be eggs and then celebrate celebration of the reproductive process and all of that. And that's why they give out bunny rabbits. And then you've got uh, Easter eggs and all that stuff. Well, some people would say, you know, why would we participate in something like that? But Christ has never been afraid of engaging in culture. And so one of the things that we do as believers is we celebrate the risen Savior and Constantine began to change the calendar. And so I hope everybody got into somebody's church this past weekend and celebrated the risen Savior. Amen, somebody. So I, I didn't think I would uh, finish without even saying too much of that to actually get started. But as I think about the resurrection, I think about what it means. And so when thinking about what it means, the fact that Jesus resurrected from the grave, uh, that all of our sins are forgiven, what it really speaks to is it speaks about the idea of transformation, a newness of life, really starting over, an opportunity, what I call to begin again. And so, so much so uh, that I've really found people are kind of finding themselves in different places of life where there's stress where there's fear, where there's frustration, where there's difficulty. And then sometimes they feel like, you know what, all of what has happened in my life, I might as well just keep going or stop right here. I don't really see how I could begin again. And so the Lord put something uh, on my heart and in my spirit to begin. And, and really the truth of the matter is I'm late in getting it started. I should have started it uh, two years ago, but the Lord yes. gave me this. Well, yeah, that's true. It's never too late. Uh, gave me the idea to start something called Begin Again University. Begin Again University. And so uh, we're going to be launching that this coming April on the 28th through the 30th. It's our university. And really what it is, it's, it's our leadership development and relationship and coaching platform 
uh, that we're going to make available for people. And, you know, like I said, people are coming from all different walks of life, all different experiences. It doesn't matter what area of life that you need to begin again in. And I say it always to people all the time. This one definitely is for you. So if you've dealt with disaster or disturbances or dealing with a difficult child, or maybe you've got to recover from divorce or whether you're walking through career changes or going back to school or just developing as a leader or starting your own business, this is something that I believe will be a blessing to you. And I believe it will be something that will help you grow immensely. So it will start Friday, April the 28th at 7.30 p.m. Saturday morning at 11 a.m. And then Sunday right at 6 p.m. And I know someone will be saying, how in the world are you going to be able to do all of these different things? Well, we've got several different divisions. And so there are some who may be interested in the relationship or I should say the leadership development entrepreneurship track. And so starting a business from right where you are, how to go through the strategic planning process, how to do forecasting and how to be able to do market segmentation and enter into the market to be able to find your niche of what it is that you're good at. Some may want to be in the relationship and family track. And so if you've got, if you're dealing with raising children, difficult moments, children in trauma, recovering from divorce, or just how to be single, And dating in today's time can be a trip. (laughs) And so uh, we've got that available for people, too. But but here's the real thing. Someone asked me, you said, well, well, why would I enroll at Begin Again University? And I tell people all the time, some of the benefits that you would receive would be mentoring, molding, modeling. And here's the big one, mind molding. Because sometimes, you know, remember the scripture says, as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. And so how to be able to develop the kind of thinking process to actually start from zero, nothing and get to something. That's a whole process in and of itself. And then really the other one I say is the motivation uh, to actually begin again. And then someone asked me, you know, I heard that you're doing this begin again Uh, launch weekend and it's the relationship and leadership development coaching platform that you have. So tell me what you receive in the begin again, leadership development and coaching platform group, uh, mentoring group. And so there are a couple of things. And so if you're, like I said, we've got several different tracks. And so there's leadership and organizational development. I call this relationship readiness, repair and renewal. And then there's the specialized coaching mentioning a specialized coaching and mentoring a platform that we have, which is a part of my own proprietary ownership, the coaching model that I give to people uh, where they're going to grow in the area of what I call the spiritual and relationship or spiritual, relational and leadership readiness or development. And where the big issue is, is that many people already know what to do, but may not necessarily know how to do it and really broadening their ability to increase their capacity to be able to do it is one of the benefits of engaging and involving in this. And so someone said, well, now how often is this going to happen and how often is it going to take place? And so monthly, monthly, you'll have training opportunities with me, weekly lunch and learn moments. And then there is the private Facebook community, because sometimes you've got to engage with people who are like minded who are right there with you, walking right where you're walking to be able to trade ideas. Really, the scripture would say it this way, iron sharpens iron. And so uh, someone began to say, "Okay, well, now, you know, how in the world are you going to do all of this? Where is all of this coming from? And so one of the things I'm thankful for that I spent enough time in and during my younger years was investing in training and development myself. And so I am a a certified leadership development and relationship coach. Um, I have three earned master's degrees, one doctorate already, and I'm working on a second doctorate right now. So pray for me uh, in regards to all of that. But I believe that this is something uh, that will be beneficial to people that will help them grow, help them to develop and help them be able to take the next steps in their life. I've been there, done that. I've had to do it. 
uh, myself with rebranding and my own businesses and ministries and all of those different kinds of things. And so much of the success I've enjoyed today has come from my own experience in regards to walking through the process of what it means to literally have to begin again. And so I'm no stranger to life, no stranger to difficulty, no stranger to distress. But I can tell you indeed that indeed you can make it. And so this is going to take place right on April the 28th through the 30th, Friday to Sunday. And here is the big question, Coco, people want to know. Dr. Johnson, how much does it cost? I'm doing launch weekend free. That's right. Launch weekend for Begin Again University is going to be free. It'll be virtual. Uh, some of you who are watching me online now, whatever platform you're watching me on, uh, our Dominion On Demand YouTube page, our Begin Again You YouTube page, our Facebook page at Dominion Ministries, our Facebook page at Begin Again University, you'll be able to watch it live and be in person right at 119 29th Street in the great city of Newport News, Virginia. So I don't want you to miss it. It's gonna take place Friday night, starting at 7.30, Saturday at 11 a.m. And then Sunday at 6 p.m., I'm gonna spend some time talking about how to walk through the process of beginning again. Okay, I just had one question. Go ahead, yeah. So Sunday at 6 p.m. Now, don't you, will you have a service at your church? Oh, yeah. My ser service at my church will take place at 10 a.m. And so then later on at, at 6 p.m., uh, I'm going to be live right back there uh, at what we call the upper room area where the Begin Again University will begin to take place. And so if you're interested, put your information in the comment section. Uh, for those of you who are watching me on live, uh, right now. And for those of you who are listening in, just just remember this begin again university on Facebook. Go to our Facebook page or remember our website begin again dot TV begin again dot TV. I'm excited about what the Lord's getting ready to do in the lives of people of helping them be able to start over and to begin again. And so I wanted to make sure I put that out there for people. Uh, so that there is something that can help you start over again in your life. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 Let's get into the word. I always like to come and always make sure that I'm prepared uh, with a word from the Lord. You know, when I think about resurrection or the resurrection of Jesus, like I already said before, I think about begin again, beginning again. And the power of the resurrection is in the transformation of the newness of life. Let me say that again. The power of the resurrection is made manifest in the transformation of the newness of life. Remember when Jesus, when he resurrected from the grave, he first was unrecognizable. And I said this in the message on Sunday uh, that sometimes uh, what God's getting ready to do in somebody's life that's listening even today or that may catch this a little bit later on today is that what God's getting ready to do for you, you're going to become so unrecognizable in your life that it's going to be like you never even went through that experience. So when you consider that Jesus becomes our first example and many people say, well, now, Reverend, now, where are you getting all of this from? I want to take you right back to the place uh, where really what I say all ministry begins, because if I was really taking some time to preach right now, I'd take you back to the Garden of Eden and then I'd take you right on back to the Garden of Gethsemane. And then we could finish right on up when Jesus rises from the grave and he's in a tomb, that tomb is right on the outside of a garden, but I'm going to leave that alone and just kind of get into this word real quickly for today because it's going to help somebody how Jesus literally becomes one who begins again in his life so much so that he becomes unrecognizable. I want to just read a little bit of scripture and then I'm going to just dive right into this and we'll get right into this and then we'll we'll pray and answer some questions for some people who may call in. I want you to go with me if you can to Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, and I want y'all to ride with me all the way from verse one through verse seven. And I may get to verse seven, but I probably will stop around verse five. And so I'm talking tonight a little bit about how is it that Jesus was able to begin again in his life. Consider this in Matthew, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 24 and verse one, Bible says this, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, 
they and certain other women noticed that the women were at the tomb first. Mm, I'll leave that alone. With them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. They didn't come empty handed either. I'll leave that alone. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, then went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their heads to the earth, they said to them, here is the shout, why do you seek the living among the dead? We're talking about Jesus beginning again and the two angels spoke to the women and said, why do you seek the living among the dead? See, whenever you are about to begin again or start over in your life, one of the things you cannot do is think that you will find living things among dead things. A lot of times people have a mental ascent to starting over and a mental ascent to beginning again. But oftentimes what they end up trying to do is to bring what's from their past into their future when God has already caused or allowed the past to die. I just got to say to somebody that's listening to me right now on this hour of power, before you can get started again in a new career, before you can get started in a new relationship, before you can write the business plan, before you can apply to the university to go back to school, before you can even think about starting over, your paradigm has got to shift because you cannot seek living things among dead things. I need to just say it this way to somebody. You need to let it go. You need to come to terms with the fact that whatever has died has died, that it's over with. You have got to sit with it. You've got to allow it to be buried and you've got to let it go. Because the only way that you can start with a newness of life, God doesn't start over again with dead things. He starts over with things that he has called to be alive and living. And so I want to say to somebody, don't try to resurrect what God has allowed to die. I hope somebody is getting that right there. That is just, I mean, I could preach for about 50 minutes on that right there about how we try to, I'll say it better to you this way, Coco. People can move to a different state, but have the same experience. They can date a different person. They can date the same person in a different body because the issue doesn't have so much to do with the other person or the new state. The issue has to do with them as an individual. So you've got to come to a place where you allow whatever has died to die. God wants to give you new businesses. He wants to give you new ideas. He wants to give you new concepts. He wants to give you new strategies. He wants to give you a new spouse. He wants to give you a new house. I hope somebody is hearing me with this right here. And he wants everything new. What did Ty Tribbett say? I wish I could sing like him. Or oh, I wish I had the track. New, new, new. Everything new, new, new. So God wants to give you stuff that is new, but you've got to be willing to stop seeking the stuff that's living among the things that are dead. Now, the text went on to say this, that after uh, the moment happened where the angel spoke to them, why do you seek the living among the dead, that the ladies went and saw the gardener there. Now, we know the story that the gardener that was there was Jesus but they did not recognize that it was Jesus. And then all of a sudden, when Jesus began to speak to them, matter of fact, I'm gonna read it to you. When Jesus began to speak to them, here's what the verse, the text says in verse six. He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again, and they remembered his words, and they remembered his words. Then they returned to Galilee or returned to the tomb and told all the things uh, to everyone, to the 11 and all the rest that they had experienced right there at the tomb. What got me about this, Coco, is that the text said, then they remembered his words. In other words, they were in a reflective and moment of recollection to begin to remember what it was like to have been with Jesus. And then when they recalled and remembered, then they knew it was him. Now, now, now this is what gets me about this. What gets me about this is they're talking to him 
and don't know him. But as they're talking to him and don't know him, when he says to them, remember how he said to you what it was that he was going to do. And all of a sudden, if I were there at the scenery in the garden, I could see uh, Mary and Martha's eyes kind of go up to the side of their head, if you will. You know how you see those bubbles and things. You see people that are thinking and words that are inside, inside of the bubbles. And all of a sudden, something struck them in their mind and in their spirit to say, wait a minute, this is Jesus. Which is simply to say that there are moments and experiences. I'll say it to you better like this. Have you ever had an experience with somebody who is not with you, but somebody said something that they would say or said something that caused you to remember who they were? And then all of a sudden you start thinking in your mind and all of a sudden you start remembering them. What it is that you remember, it may not be the words, but what you will remember is the experience you had with them. See, this is important when you start thinking about Mary and Martha, because they had an experience with Jesus and the fact that their brother had died and that their brother had come back to life. So those bubbles and those words that are inside of the bubble are the moments of them thinking about what he did for Lazarus. And then all of a sudden, a light bulb turns on to them. He gave Lazarus as an example of what he himself was going to do. Now, here is the shout cue and the message for the rest of the day, and then we're going to get to answer some questions. And that is this. What was it about Jesus that caused these women to remember that they were actually talking to him? In other words, what experience did they have with him that caused them to remember who Jesus was so that he would become recognizable to them? And so keep in mind what I'm saying. Jesus himself had to begin again. But in his new beginning, he became unrecognizable until the women begin to remember their experience with him. And so I want to talk to us today a little bit just simply about how was it that Jesus was able to begin again to cause others to remember. That, that, that's really where I want to go for the lion's share of the rest of my time on the hour of power. What is it or what was it about Jesus that caused him or allowed him to begin again in his resurrection that caused the women to remember who it is that Jesus was? One of the first things about Jesus and being able to begin again is that Jesus had a lot of stuff that many of us don't have. One of the things that Jesus had was he had focus. You cannot begin again without focus in your life. You can't begin again without focus in your life. And one of the first, one of the things that you got to have in regards to focus is you have to have so much focus where you don't allow distractions to get you off track. Let me just stop right here and work through that just for a second. Distractions that can get you off track. Jesus handled all of his distractions well. What caused the women to remember that this was Jesus is the fact that Jesus, they remembered how well he handled all of his distractions. What I'm referring to is that Jesus handled the accusations of the Pharisees very well, and he didn't waste time trying to answer his critics. Remember, they kept trying to uh, uh, assume that he was the king of the Jews. Some people kept saying that he is the son of God. He is the Messiah. Some referred to him as Joseph, the carpenter's son. Some thought that he was being an insurrectionist. Some thought that he was breaking both the Jewish law and the Roman law. And Jesus never took time to answer his critics. He just did what he did and he was who he was. And that's what caused those women to remember him. Remember the text of scripture, what he said about Lazarus? He st Lazarus uh, died and Jesus didn't come until the fourth day. The text said that Jesus didn't even come until Lazarus began to stink. I wish I had time to preach right here. Sometimes God will wait until stuff is stinking in your life before he will allow you to begin again because he ain't going to let nobody else take credit for the glory of what he's about to do in your life. And what you've got to learn to do is re remain focused in the midst of distractions. 
You can't answer your critics. Jesus didn't allow what his critics had to say to bother him. Come on, number two about staying focused is you've got to be able to overcome the propensity and the need to defend yourself. You've got to overcome the propensity and the need to defend yourself. Jesus did not need to defend himself. He understood what he was and who he was. He had a healthy self-esteem about himself. So he didn't really think about trying to defend whether or not he caused the blind man's eyes to open. Matter of fact, Jesus is unlike us. Come on, preachers, I'm coming to you right now. I'm coming down your street. Because all too often, we want somebody to know what it is that we did for somebody else. That's why there are television cameras, people following you around with camera phones so you can get it out. Now, I know I'm on social media right now, and I get that. I understand that. But some of us want everybody to know what it is that we did. Jesus was different than us. When he did his ministry, Jesus would tell people, don't tell nobody. Because he understood what his assignment was. He understood the jealousy, the envy, and the strife of humanity. And so what Jesus did was he fed people, he handled stuff for people, he resurrected people from the dead, he explained the scriptures to people, but he felt that he never needed to defend himself. In other words, he let his ministry talk for him. If you're going to begin again, just begin again and allow what it is that you do to speak for you rather than you trying to speak for yourself. I know I am talking good right through here. If I was in the old church with my granddaddy, I would say he coming on a Hyundai right now for my tongues in that point right there. So listen, you don't need to worry about trying to defend yourself. You just need to do what it is that you do. And you got to remember, folk are going to be folk. They're going to interpret what you say and what you do through their lens because folk love gossip, whether it's true or not. So you might as well do what it is that God is calling you to do. Somebody ought to put some hearts and thumbs and fire in the chat on that right there. Somebody type it in for me. Pull over to the side of the road. Tap somebody on the next cubicle next to you. Don't get in trouble with your boss and say to them, do what you do. If we could just get people to do what they do and be who they are, it will help them to remain focused. See, one of the reasons why Jesus was able to begin again is because he had focus. He did not allow distractions to distract him. He handled all of his distractions well. He did not feel a need to defend himself. Number three under focus is this. I hope somebody is going to get this one, is that Jesus did not allow dire situations to scare him. He was not afraid of lack. He was not afraid of a crisis. In other words, Jesus had good crisis management skills. He knew how to be able to operate in who he was and handle situations, although the situations themselves were dire. I, I got an example for you. Jesus is out teaching and walking while he's teaching, going from village to village to village. People are following him while he's on the way. The woman with the issue of blood comes. He's on his way to Jairus' house. He still has power enough to heal her and go raise Jairus' daughter from the dead. As a matter of fact, if you follow the text carefully, Jairus and them come to Jesus while he's teaching people out in the field. Jesus starts walking to Jairus's house. The girl hadn't died yet, but the woman with the issue of blood stopped Jesus in his track because power left out from him. And then the girl died and that still didn't bother Jesus. Lord, help me in here today. It still didn't bother him, still didn't move him. He was able to get to where he needed to be in order to help that girl come back to life. He can handle dire situations. Here's another example. Here he is still teaching the same group of people. They moved to another village. The crowd has begun to expand. If I was there at the time and narrating the story, it's almost like maybe Jesus started with probably 30 people out of the field. And then somebody's blind eyes got open. A demon got cast out of somebody. Then all of a sudden now it's 200 people. 
And now all of a sudden the woman with the issue of blood comes, she gets healed and everybody is like, wait a minute, she ain't even supposed to be here. I know there's got to be something about this man. Words start to spread. Now we up to 500 to 1,000 people. He gets to Jairus' house. He heals Jairus' daughter. And now everybody realized, remember in that text of scripture, they came out to meet Jesus when he was on his way and said, Lord, ain't no sense and there ain't no need of you coming. And Jesus says, take me where she is gets to where she is text says that jesus put everybody else out <laughs> i wish i had time to preach coco i really wish i had time to preach because sometimes god gotta put some people out of your life in order for you to be able to begin again because everybody that's in the room don't necessarily want to see you resurrect so sometimes reverend the pandemic was good for you because the people who really didn't believe in your ministry need to get out anyway People who didn't believe in what God was doing in your life needed to get away from you anyway. People who didn't believe in who you are needed to get from around you anyway. I need to watch my voice in here because I feel my preacher about to come on right now. So what God does is he puts everybody out and then simply does this. Now, remember, Jesus is still a priest. And priests couldn't touch dead bodies. They couldn't be around the unclean things. Watch what the text of scripture right there said. Jesus grabbed the dead girl by the hand. Lord, help me in here, Jesus. Which is to say Jesus is never afraid to get his hands dirty in order to help you begin again in your life. I wish somebody would talk to me on the stream. You ought to pull to the side of the road and hit your horn. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you 15 seconds to pull over on the side of the interstate, put your shout cue on right here, and shout right there. God ain't afraid to get his hands dirty in your life. Because we're Bishop. This is the Hour Power with Dominion Outreach Center, Bishop Ray Johnson. And begin again, universities. I'll tell you more about that. But come on with that word. Did you get your shout on? Listen, so he, he never, never felt the need to defend himself. And what he does is brings the girl back to life. The fact that she walking around and that she's talking, what that does is add another thousand people. And so now Jesus is tired and he says to the disciples, y'all feed these people. And then the disciples were like, um, you the one that done did all these miracles. Everybody out here following you. And so Jesus says, all right, well, now tell me what you got. And then one of them say, Peter says, we ain't got nothing but a little boy with two fish and five loaves. Jesus says, bring it to me. I am trying my best not to holler, yell, and run through this studio today. Because if you will just bring what you have to Jesus. You may not have all of everything you need to begin again, but if you will just bring it to Jesus, he will help you begin again in your life. My God, today, come on, I got to keep rolling. He ends up feeding the 5,000, which could have been men, women. If you add well, women and children up where anywhere between 15 to 20 or 25,000 some people, Jesus is able to begin again because he remained focused. He understood why he was here. He didn't allow distractions to get him off course. He never felt the need to defend himself. And he was able to high, handle dire situations. I hope somebody's getting this. I'm getting ready to land the plane. Come on, let me give you the next one. Jesus was able to begin again because Jesus didn't let people become too familiar with him while he was beginning again. Can I say that one more again? He didn't let people become too familiar with him while he was beginning again. Remember a first thing upon his resurrection, he told Mary, don't touch me because I haven't ascended yet to my father. Oh my God, I wish I, I'm about to throw a chair in here now because sometimes people want to put their hands and their mouth on you when you're beginning again, but you can't let them get too familiar with you. You got to be clear about what your assignment is and learn how to cut some things off, set some records straight. And if you got to read some people the riot act, I'm trying to help somebody in here. Oh my goodness today. Don't let people become too familiar with you. Let me give you some examples of what I mean by making sure that people don't become too familiar with you because you know, people do remember you in the last state that they found you in. Yeah. 
and they always expect you to be in that kind of state. And then there are some things that happen to you that have been orchestrated by some people who are your haters, who are your critics, that put you in the state to where you got to begin again. And so what you have to remind them is, I was who I was before you got here. I'm going to be who I am when you leave here, because who I am don't got anything to do with you. It's got everything to do with God. It really ain't got nothing to do with me. I got Bible for it. Come on, watch this. Here is Jesus when he is with Peter. He asked Peter, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? He said, well, some say that you are Elijah or some say that you are the prophet Isaiah. Jesus, I ain't concerned about what they say. I want to know who do you say that I am? You see me walk on the water. You see me ex uh, take the five fish. I mean, the, uh, the two fish and the five loaves. You see me heal the little girl. You see me do. I want to know what it is that you say. And then all of a sudden, Peter catches a revelation of who Jesus is. And because he caught the revelation of Jesus is who Jesus was, Peter couldn't get too familiar with him. Remember now, watch this. Now that's point A. Point B is this. Remember when Jesus is getting ready to, he's preparing himself for his death. And in his preparation for his death, watch what happens. He begins now to wash all of the disciples' feet. Peter didn't even want him to wash his feet. Jesus said, unless I wash your feet, you got no place for me. And then all of a sudden, when Jesus knows he's going to die, Peter tries to rebuke Jesus. God help me today. And he Jesus turns around and says to Peter, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. You've got to be able to discern who and what is talking when people get too familiar with you. My God, today in here, you got to discern who and what is talking when people get too familiar with you. Jesus never let people get familiar with him. He was clear about who is this, who and what his assignment was. Now, let me back up real quickly uh, because I just hear the Holy Ghost telling me to tell somebody, regardless of what their title is, I don't care if it's Bishop so-and-so, don't let them get familiar with you. You got to be clear or, or apostle or evangelist so-and-so, don't let folk get too familiar familiar with you. You got to be clear about who you are with God and be able to finish your assignment if you are going to begin again. Don't let people get too familiar with you. Can I land the plane with this? We can get ready to open up the phone lines and get ready to start praying uh, for some people. Here it is right here. If you're going to begin again, you're going to begin again with friends. If you're going to begin again, if you're going to have the power of resurrection made resident in your life, you're going to need some friends. And every last one of us need friends. Everybody going to need some friends. Listen to this. Uh, some of us think we got friends because we got followers. Huh. Let, let, let me let me help you. Let me let me help you. Followers are not friends. Right. Let, let me help somebody with that. Some of us think we got friends because we got fans. Yeah. <laughs> Followers and fans are not your friends. They are friends. They are followers. They follow you at a distance and they are fans. They appreciate what it is that you do. See, with Jesus, those who were his disciples became his friends. That, that, that's, that's, remember Jesus said, uh, who is my mother? Who is my father? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Those, in other words, who is my family? Those who do the will of God, watch this, concerning me. Those who are who my family is. Watch John 15 and 15. I'm going to read it real quickly. Jesus said this to his disciples. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father. Watch this. I have made known to you. No longer do I call you servants. I now call you friends. We've got to make sure that we distinguish the difference between fans and followers and even family and friends. Everybody's going to need some friends. Let me give you uh, uh, some, some qualifications for who true, who true friends are. But this is, this is who true friends are. Uh, uh, friends are people uh, that they know you for real and they don't trip because they know you for real. 
They, they know you behind the scenes for real and still they don't get too familiar with you. They know who you are for real and they don't trip out with you when you may have a trip out moment. That's who your real friends are. I'm trying to tell somebody fans and followers, they are not your friends. Watch this. True friends are not people who are fly by night relationships. Most of us have good associations and associations are built on whatever you can do for me, I can do for you. If you do for me, I'll do for you. Friends do for you when you can't do nothing for them. When you can't help them, friends will still do for you. Those are people who are real friends. True friends are people who are faithful in season and out of season. Watch this. And during seasons, no matter what season they are in, they are still with you thick and thin. This is why I'm saying to somebody listening to me today that those who are fans and those who are followers and those who are family may not always be your friends. And let me just deal with the family thing for a minute. Some people are family because y'all got the same bloodline. They are your kin because of skin, but they are not family with you because they are your friends. I'm trying to help somebody. You've got to distinguish and discern. Somebody type that in. Distinguish and discern the difference between people who are related and people who are in relationship with you. Just because they are related to you doesn't mean that they have relationship with you and doesn't mean that they are your friends. Look at this one here. This is a good one right here. This is a good one. And I'll quit after this. We'll get ready to pray for some folk and answer some phone calls. True friends, you don't have to manage their emotions, their ego, or their efficacy. I'm going to say that again. For true friends, people who are true friends, you don't have to manage their emotions, they're not always a drain on you. You ain't got to manage their ego. They understand who they are. They operate with humility and you don't have to manage their efficacy. My goodness in here. So, so in other words, they are mature enough to be with you in all seasons mature enough to be with you in all seasons. They understand the dynamic of the relationship. They ain't got to talk to you on the phone every five minutes. Well, why you ain't call me and why you ain't text me and I ain't heard from you in a while. As a matter of fact, true friends have already begun again in their life and they're looking to see if you have begun again in your life because iron does sharpen iron. What do you bring to the table in the connection in this relationship? True friends know how to make a deposit without demanding a withdrawal. Lord, help me today in here. They know how to make a deposit without always having to demand a withdrawal. So Jesus was able to begin again in his life because he learned how to remain focused. Jesus was able to begin again in his life because he didn't allow people to become too familiar with him. Jesus was able to begin again in his life because Jesus had true friends. His true friends began to carry out his mission, vision, and they shared his values. I just said something right there with somebody. Somebody need to write that down. Some preacher need to hear me and write that down. That's free, Doc. Some people, you will know that they have become your friends when they can carry out your mission, your vision, and y'all share the same values. Too many people enter into relationship with people who do not share your values. And if you don't share the same values, how can you see what I see and say what I say and do what I do and share my perspective? I got to land the plane. I got to quit. I'm just trying to tell somebody that you can begin again, but you can't do it without focus. You can't do it by letting people become too familiar with you. And you sure enough need some real friends. My God in here today. Come on, let's go to the phone lines. I can keep preaching because I got a whole lot more. Bishop Ray Johnson of Dominion Outreach Center and Begin Again University is here to pray with you and for you, touch and agree. Did you get something out of that word? I know I did. Oh my goodness. I I, I was waiting for more, but I had to look at the I, clock. I'm like, oh, that's right. He does have to play. <laughs> but listen, if you desire prayer, come on, call in right now. We can take about two or three phone calls. 
454-1650. And you know why you were talking about Jesus yeah. and how, uh, you know, they, they did not recognize him and how he uh, was with friends. Yeah. Uh, that word friends, I've always been leery of it because it's just one letter away from fiend. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, and fans is uh, short for fanatics. Mm -hmm. So we got a phone call coming in. Thank you so much for calling the Hour of Power. You're live on the air. Go ahead. God bless her. I don't, I'm just going to CD of Bethel Street today. A CD. She was a CD and what a preach today. We are a CD. Uh, nothing but the truth. So yes, ma'am. I'm yes. telling you, you, you touch every era, every, every area of my life of what I'm walking in. Amen. 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 God I bless you. Thank you for the strength. I thank you for the knowledge. You even opened my eyes to some things that I couldn't see. Mm. Praise God. That's my friends. And I'm not talking about friends. I'm talking about family friends. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. And, and you just let me know. They just come on there. Come on there. Come on there. Because when I get tired, I can't find not one of them. Mm -hmm. I know that's right, sis. I know I'm that is right. I'm going on vacation now, Pastor. You just let me. Look here. I say go on vacation and don't tell nobody where you're going and don't tell them when you come back. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, I, I would like for Bishop to pray for your safe travels if you don't mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, and Bishop, pray for me. I'm looking for a church. Amen. Well, I'm we, looking for a church home and um, my husband and I have been in the ministry for about 20 years, but God said it was time to come out of Egypt. What city are you in? You said me. Right over there at Dominion Look here. We are located at 119 29th Street, 119 29th Street in the city of Newport News, Virginia. Uh, services are right there at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, Wednesday night at 7.30 a.m., uh, 7.30 p.m. I'm sorry. We'd love to have you. Love for you to come. I'd love to serve as your pastor. Let me pray for you real quickly before you get ready to go. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for my sister who is called in today. I thank you, God, Lord, that you begin to lift the weight from her of all of the withdrawals that are being made as she is serving everybody. And God, I pray that as you send her on vacation, God, that you'll meet every need, that she'll have a refreshing moment with you. She'll have some renewal time with you. And that when she comes back, allow her spirit to indeed be revived so that she can continue on in the vineyard and in the work of the Lord. I pray God for no hurt, harm or danger. Allow the angels of the living God to surround her and to keep her in perfect peace. I thank you, oh God, Lord, that the maturation that is needed for those that are pulling on her, God, that they will get a revelation that you are God and that she is not. And that, Lord, they'll begin to turn to you and come up off of her. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. Did God. you get that address? Say that again. You will see me soon. I am coming to visit. All right. Please come and visit. Would love to serve you. Yes. God bless you all. Thank God you bless. so much. We love you. God bless you. Amen. Bye-bye. Oh, that was a great call. Four five four sixteen fifty. We have time for maybe one more, just one more. If you desire a prayer for any reason, or if you enjoy that word, you can get more of that word. Ten a.m. this Sunday morning at one nineteen twenty ninth Street in Newport News. In Newport right? News, Virginia, in the Virginia wonderful city. Outreach. Thank you so much for calling the Hour of Power. You're live on the air. Go ahead. Hi, I was calling to to thank you for this message. And I was stuck in a part of it because I was at work and it got noisy and I put my headphones in and I started listening and I recognized the voice from the pastor's son. So, but I didn't know who it was. And I'm like, <laughs> God, I needed this today. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, every day this week, up until last night, I kept saying it would be better to be dead than to be alive and go through what I'm going through. And I kept repeating it. And then I went to Bible study last night and I cried through the whole service. And I'm like, God, I need to want to live. I need to want to just, just change and let everything that I can't control go. And just listening to him today, it just, 
it, it, I wrote, I started taking notes. I stopped my work and had to take notes. So I didn't forget that I need to be focused and, and not let these distractions that are just killing me away. I mean, I'm not even eating. I'm losing weight. Mm. It's just so much. And I thank you for today. I really appreciate that word because that's what I needed today. Praise God. Let me pray for you before you go. And this is Bishop Ray Johnson from the Pastor's Study. I'm one of the co-hosts with that show. And so thank you for tuning in for that. And thank you for tuning in today here at Praise Radio. You, you know, sis, one of the things that is interesting about the text of scripture that I read in Luke chapter 24 is that the angels said to the lady, why seek the living among the dead? And so you are alive, you are breathing. Yes. And Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill and destroy. But I am come that you would have life and life more abundantly. And so there's another level of living that God has for you. And the things that are dead around you, lay the dead things aside and let's be alive in Christ Jesus. And my prayer to you today is that God will strengthen you, that he'll give you laser focus on the relationships you need to cut, associations you need to cut, uh, behaviors or habits you need to cut and come out of and let God be God in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that my sister is coming to an awareness and coming to an understanding and coming to a knowledge of the truth and understanding that there is purpose for her life. God, your word reminds us over in Jeremiah 29 and 11, for you know the plans you have for us, plans to prosper us and plans to give us a hope and plans to give us a future. And so God, I pray for her hope and her future will be assured and anchored in you. Satan, I come against you by the power and the authority of Jesus name and the word of God to take your hands off of her mind and her thought life and off of everything that pertains to her. God, I thank you, Lord, for an angelic presence all around her in her home, in her life that will go with her, give her restful and peaceful peaceful sleep. God, that you would bring about a sense of peace that will begin to overshadow and come upon her. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. I thank you for life and life everlasting in the name of Jesus. Let her be the person in her family that outlives everybody in her bloodline. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Sweetheart, we love you. I want you to call us back to the praise report. I am going to still be praying for you even after this broadcast because I can relate and I can feel you. And, mm -hmm. and I'm going to need you to try to get over to Dominion Outreach 119 29th Street uh, uh, in Newport News this Sunday at 10 a.m. if you can. Please come. Thank you so much. All right. God bless you. you. God bless you. Bye-bye. We got to take a quick break, but when we come back, I'm going to need you to have your pen and paper ready so you can get this information down that's going to be happening with Begin Again University and all the information you need about Dominion Outreach Center, 119 29th Street in Newport News, and how you can sow into the ministry. Don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. Amen. God bless you, everybody that's tuning in. Sister Sheila, God bless you. My man, Brother Chester, God bless you. Yeah, Sunita. Dominion Air, praise worshiper. God bless you all. Brother Whitaker, God bless you. God bless you, Brother Whitaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My adjutant, Nehemiah Johnson, the Reverend himself. God bless you, Doc. Good to see you, man. Thank you for tuning in, tuning in today, preacher. And then my lovely bride, the lady herself. Yeah, God bless you all. God bless you all. Staying in there with me. I got a little bit more. Somebody put in the chat for me. Put in the chat for me. Thank you, baby. Thank you. The address to the church. And for those who were watching, I'll make sure I say it again. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Make sure we got the right zip code that is there. Put that inside of the chat and uh, put the uh, sweetheart, if you would put in there for me, the anniversary, not anniversary, uh, the begin again launch weekend, April 28th through the 30th. I'll say it again when we come back live on the air, but put it in right side of the chat right now for me. I'll begin again launch weekend. Matter of fact, honey, post the flyer, put the flyer up inside of the chat so people can see it here. I'll throw it up on the screen real quick for some who need to be able to see it. There it is right there. So make sure you register for that. It's free. We're launching that weekend, Begin Again University. So we're going to be starting right then, starting right then. We're starting right then. Amen, amen, amen. Y'all hang in there with me. 
got just a could just a little bit more that we're going to uh going to cover and then round it out here for today thank y'all for listening thank y'all for listening Oh, I put it in the All right. I'm ready when you're ready. I get a chance to plug it one more time. Oh, yeah. Okay. I want you to give all your information. Got it. Your social media, the Begin Again University, and how they can soak into your ministry. Oh, Lord, I keep forgetting that. <laughs> of Dominion Outreach Center, 11929th Street. I'm telling you, I, Bishop, I, I really got a good word today. I was in here Amen. like we were in church, and I was like clapping and saying, come on now, Bishop, what you talking about, <laughs> especially when you hit, oh, like I said, on the family, friends, and fans. Yeah, I got it. So please give the information on how people can stay in touch with you, how they can see you on social media, and how they can sow into your ministry. So you can catch us, uh, of course, the church address, 119 29th Street in the city of Newport News at Dominion Outreach Worship Center. And also our social media pages, Dominion Ministry on Facebook, Dominion On Demand on YouTube. And then, of course, dial D-O-W dot church for the church. And remember that Begin Again University is launching the weekend of Friday, April the 28th through the 30th, Sunday, Friday night at 7.30 p.m., Saturday, April the 29th at 11 a.m., and then Sunday again at 6 p.m., you'll be able to catch it. It will be on the Begin Again University Facebook page, the Begin Again U YouTube page. It will stream live and as well as in person right there at 119 29th Street. I'm encouraging anybody and everybody. It is free that weekend, Begin Again University. I always say to everyone, always remember you can begin again. And for the church, keep walking in dominion. Amen. And how can they sow into your ministry? Oh, yes. You can go online and give at dial.church. Look for us on Givelify Dominion Outreach Worship Center. If this word blessed you today, if it blessed you today, Dominion Outreach Worship Center, cash app, dollar sign, W-A-L-K-O-F-D-O-M-M-I-N, walk of da Men, D O M M I N. Those are just a few ways in which you'll be able to help us sow a seed in meeting needs of people. Amen. Say that one more time because you know, when you sow a seed, you get the harvest. Right. So I know that you were a blessing to me, and I definitely know you were a blessing to Amen. others. Amen. So give that uh, again. So, the, so, so giving online at dow.church, D O W dot church, and also cash app. Dollar sign W A L K walk of D O M M I N Dom men, and then you can look for us on Givelify at Dominion Outreach Worship Center. That's Dominion Outreach Worship Center. You can give to us right there. Help us by sowing a seed every time you do. You help us meet needs. We feed, clothe, and do toiletries, fresh food giveaways every single weekend. So help us continue to do that. And shout out to the first lady. We love her. If you want her to come on back in the studio. Oh, she'll be back. She'll be back. Awesome. 
So don't forget, Begin Again University, beginning April 28th, Friday at 7.30, Saturday, 11 a.m. and Sunday at 6 p.m. Bishop Ray Johnson, Dominion Outreach, 